hello lovelies on the off chance that you are a little bit bored um with this two three weeks of school and we've done the fun exciting bit out of the way and it's always kind of like this week is always a little bit of a come down and occasionally some of you might be thinking about revising so this is what we're going to do By the way, I'm now on TikTok, so if you want like 10 second revision bits in between all the dancing, then that is where to find me. But for this week we've got until we go back to school, there are a few important things I want you to do. Now, the most important thing is to work out what your priorities are. So you've had to pick 10 subjects, some of you may be doing 8, some of you may be doing 11 or 12 subjects, but not all of those subjects are as important as each other. For example, we've got high priority subjects and low priority subjects, that's just what I call them. Your high priority subjects are going to be your maths and your English, the things that you have to get that grade for, that grade 5 in, to be able to progress on with your life. So those are high priority subjects for everybody. Then the other high priority subjects are the ones you want to continue continue with next year. So for example, I did A-level biology, chemistry, maths, further maths, because that's a crazy person. Um, so my priority subjects would be science. If you want to do English next year, then like English literature would be a high priority subject, history next year, history would be a high priority subject. Whatever subject you need to get a good grade in to be able to progress with whatever you want to do next year. And this is going to be completely different and personal to absolutely everybody. So work out what your high priority subjects are, what we need to focus on, and then work out what your low priority subjects are. Um, and this is where I start annoying a lot of teachers because everyone thinks that subject is the most important subject. But um, for example, I took two languages, French and German at GCSE, and have never used them ever since. Um, I can order a glass of wine in Spanish, but my French and my German are appalling, even though apparently I got A's at GCSE in them way back when. Um, so for me, those would be low priority subjects, like RS would be a low priority subject for me, unless you want to do it next year. It's anything that, you know, you just had to pick to make up the numbers to get your 10 or 11 or whatever your school told you you had to do, but you don't need it for next year, um, and maybe it's not your favourite subjects. Those are going to be your low priority subjects, and again, this is going to be completely personal and completely different for everybody else. Um, so just because your friend's got a set of high priority and set of low priority subjects doesn't mean that yours are going to be the same. Yours could be completely different and that is absolutely fine. Then once we've worked out what are our high priority and our low priority subjects, we need to start thinking about planning a revision timetable. Um, and it is a revision timetable at this point because we really should be thinking about starting to revise a bit by now. But when I say plan a timetable, it doesn't mean it has to be the same absolutely every single week. What I suggest to my students do is they sit down, they plan out kind of like the bare bones of a timetable and then adjust it every single week. So if you know you've got like a history test coming up and you want to do a little bit extra for history, there's like a flexible slot where you can put a little bit extra in and do your history in there. But it is important that you spend more time on your high priority subjects. Yes, not every subject is equal. You do not have to spend exactly the same amount of time on maths as you do on RS, especially if you're not going to be doing RS or need RS for next year. So work out which subjects you need to spend more time on. Now it is important that you kind of like keep track of how much time you're spending on each subject because it is always tempting just to do your favourite subjects um, and then forget about the ones that you don't really like. However, you do have to sit exams in all subjects, even the ones you don't really like. So it is important that you spend time doing those as well. So it's important to keep track of subjects. 
it's important to make sure that you are prioritizing things that are good for your mental health and again this is going to be completely personal to everybody whether it's like walking the dog or going to ballet or going to football or whatever it is for you make sure that you make time for it and make sure you block out that time on your timetable now these timetables can change the entire time that is completely normal and completely personal to you but it is a really really good habit to get into at the beginning of the week just to sit down or maybe come like a Sunday night before you go back to school sit down and plan out what your week looks like what do you need to take in school on certain days do you have a test coming up that you need to work out some time to revise for starting planning so we don't miss stuff out it's a really really important thing to get into the habit to now now the other thing we need to be thinking about for school is kind of like teachers are going to be deciding whether to put you into higher whether they're going to put you in for foundation exams and this is a really personal thing um just because the person next to you is doing higher foundation doesn't mean you have to higher obviously you can get higher marks on it um, but there are harder questions and the, there are more topics that you need to cover. Foundation is a good option for some people because you can still go all the way up to a five on a foundation and 10 years down the line an employer looking at your certificates, your CV is they're actually going to know whether you sat the higher or the foundation paper. There's no shame in seeing the foundation paper at all. In fact there are a few advantages for it. For example the foundation paper is easier it has fewer topics on there and the questions are laid out easier yes you have to get more marks on a foundation paper to get that five um and some people always think that doing the higher paper is easier because you only have to get like 10 marks to get a four or a five on the higher paper and whereas in the foundation paper you need to get lots of marks but they're easier marks to get. So it's gonna be less stressful, um, you're gonna feel better in the exam because you can do, hopefully, a lot more of the paper. So overall, um, actually shifting down to the foundation paper for some people might just make the whole thing a lot less stressful, especially if it's in a subject where you just need to get that five, you just need to pass, you don't need to get a six, a seven, eight or nine, and you're a bit worried about it, um, sometimes the foundation paper can be a really good option for people. I'm going to do a whole separate video on why that is the case, um, but it is a negotiation with your school. Just because your school says, I'm definitely doing the higher paper, you're definitely doing the foundation paper, you have a voice in this as well. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is that mocks are well, kind of like happened and coming up in this awful, awful situation that the government's put us in. So please try and use mocks productively. Um, look at why you didn't get marks. Is it because like um, you didn't know the content? So go away and revise that content. Or was it because there was a little bit of exam technique problem there? Did you not read like the command words properly? Um, so those are really good things to do and then start off really low key with your revision we do not want to burn out at this point that would be a bad bad thing to be doing go away and do some like flashcards and some mind maps and um do a few short answer questions i do not at this point want you to be sitting whole exam papers that is not the time for this now we will start doing that soon we'll start doing that in a little bit don't worry but now is not the time to be doing whole exam papers um now's the time to like really really focus on getting our core knowledge secure and in our heads and ready so that we can take that and then use that to answer exam papers um but now is not quite the right time to start doing exam papers do kind of like low-key revision so like retrieve the questions um nice easy things like that um and we are planning that exams are going to happen um that's the best that we know so far. Um, so good luck guys. I'm feeling really, really positive about this year. Um, we are gonna have a great exam period. It's gonna be you, it's gonna be me, and we're gonna do this together. Ouch. This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.